Hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are well. Thought I would take a look at the camshafts today. As you saw a little bit earlier, I had the opportunity to weigh them 4.1 kgs. Both of them are run by these slave sort of gears. So we've got a single vernier pulley and they both connect together and they just run as slaves. Camshaft specs are on the intake, 224 degrees duration and 7.2 millimeters lift. Then on the exhaust, we're running 228 degrees duration and seven millimeters lift. What are the options with camshafts? Some people that might want to run stock ones. There's some people that might want to go for aftermarket ones. And there's probably also a minority or a small amount of people that say, let's go for a camshaft regrind. A couple of options are available. I have entire in Australia. They do a whole bunch of different cam profiles. Like one of the ones that I was looking at was on intake and exhaust, 276 duration and 9.3 millimeters lift. Let's say you want, are on what, more of budget, then you would keep these stock, I guess. There's another option for camshaft regrinding where effectively this base of the cam will get reground closer to the shaft. So they won't actually add material on over here, but they'll rather take from the back because that's the ultimate sort of base where you start from. Just to quickly explain, so we have our bucket. Inside our bucket is our little shim. We've got our retainer. I don't have keepers here, but we've got our retainer, our spring, and our valve. Inside the valve train, the assembly is pretty much similar, but just imagine that the valve is actually kept in place through a keeper, and literally it'll fit in like this. This exact layout is called a bucket over shim design. As you can see, so the bucket sits on top of the shim, so bucket over shim. Going back to a camshaft regrind, the valve will be closed at base level. There might be a little bit of like play, or it might be just, just touching. So as the camshaft turns, so does the lobe on the camshaft, which pushes the valve down. Effectively, if you had to shave off the bottom of the cam to reprofile or to reprofile and to give it more lift, you have to do your calcs to work out what your shim over bucket measurements are. You might have to get a bigger shim, which definitely will be the case, to make up for that difference. So however many millim millim millimeters you shave off here, you're going to have to sh have a shim that's going to make up that exact difference. Based on the condition of these buckets, I would probably just reuse them for the build as opposed to buying new ones. They're not worn, they just like have a mark on them or discoloration. Let's compare the stock size of valve with like an aftermarket set, which are performance springs. Now bearing in mind, these are unwrapped and I don't want to unwrap them. And these are not in compression, but you can feel off the bat they're real strong. Uh, they're a lot thicker and they're a lot skinnier in height or a lot shorter so if you take a look here so there's like a bit of a height difference and these are not in compression I think all in all these are in quite good condition there's just minimal sort of like everyday use wear and tear but yeah I'd say as a whole they are pretty much in good condition for me I've spoken to Ivan Tai in Australia and they recommended for my build a 276 duration with a 9.3 lift for what I'm looking for. So that's kind of the way I'm gonna go. Yeah, I just wanted to find out your thoughts, like have any of you guys gotten off the market camshafts? Did you guys get like any camshaft regrinds? Chaps, just wanted to say thank you very much for watching the latest uh, and we'll catch up soon. Peace.